This is Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. It's one of the best settings in college football. The Wasatch Mountain Range standing guard while passionate BYU fans take in the game day atmosphere. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall's Cougars broke through last Friday. Now quarterback Jake Heaps tries to keep the momentum going while avenging a stinging upset. The Utah State Aggies have arrived in Provo. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Russell Athletic, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. An in-state battle from Lavelle Edwards Stadium, only 127 miles separates Utah State and BYU. Last year it was the Aggies who upset the Cougars. Now BYU is out to set things straight. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore, as always, joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. And, Rod, a week ago, we stood here. We talked about BYU quarterback Jay Keeps. It ends up being the special teams and defense that got them a much-needed win and some momentum. Yeah. Tonight, they need another well-rounded game. Yeah, I'm surprised. We're talking about defense with BYU. After all the years of all the explosive offense, it's about their defense. And they are struggling on offense. And Bronco Mendehall has really turned to his defense to get it done. And he says it's the best front seven he's had in a, in a long, long, time they did a great job last week holding Central Florida to 17 points and then coming up with a big play late in the game to stop a would-be game-winning drive as for Utah State if three plays this year had gone their way they could be a 3-0 team you remember what happened opening week they gave Auburn all they could handle yeah. Auburn needed that magical comeback the onside kick it's been their running game that have given people trouble and think about this they went to Auburn they put up 38 points and more than 200 yards rushing and they did it with a freshman quarterback but the key to the offense is this great running back Robert Turin. Yeah, I said great. He had four touchdowns last week. Powerful guy, but great speed to the outside as well. He's the real focus of what they do offensively. Beautiful late afternoon here in Provo. They play for the old wagon wheel. They will you trying to bring it back to Provo. Kick off when we return. <laughs> College Football Primetime, brought to you by JCPenney. Everybody wins. Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And Fidelity Investments, turn here. You know I love you. You know I'm going to be here for you every single snap. Players win games, man. Players win games. Great atmosphere. Only show in town now. National television. Let's get this thing done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That was Utah State's head coach Gary Anderson moments ago. And he's moments away from seeing his team receive to start this game. His third season in Logan had a lot of success as the longtime defensive coordinator at Utah. Very strong recruiter. And he has the Aggies headed in the right direction. The best part of pregame is that pregame chat you get from the head coach. That's good stuff. 81st meeting between these schools. BYU's dominated, won 10 straight up until last year when Utah State thumped BYU 31 to 16. Erwin Williams and Chris Harris back to receive Justin Sorensen to kick off for the Cougars. And it's a line drive that goes all the way out of the end zone on the fly. So from Houston, Texas, Cypress Creek High School comes the freshman Chucky Keaton who came in this past summer, worked out hard, watched film, got to know guys like the veterans Robert Terman, and earned the spot game one at Auburn and almost pulled off the big upset. One word about him, poise. 
He was not disturbed in the big environment at Auburn. Turbin, you'll see a lot of this tonight. And Turbin is off to the races. First play, could it be? Yes, touchdown Utah State. Career rushing touchdown for the junior Robert Turbin. 80 yards to open this game. And Josh Thompson makes it 7 zip. Hey, Tess, let's take a look at how they get to the edge here. Great blocking here. And then watch once you get your running back out, 20 Smith, who does a great job of blocking downfield to really spring Turbin. You get the edge taken care of. Now look at Smith. He's 20 right there. He opens up on the safety out there on um, Preston Hadley. And that opens up the entire sideline for Turbin to go 80 yards on the first play. Chucky Keaton. Eyes wide open. Can't be that easy. <laughs> Four touchdown runs a week ago, but was stopped on a two-point conversion attempt that ended the game in overtime against Colorado State. Next time he touches the ball, gone for 80 right here. He got a lot of great help on the edge there. A couple of real key blocks to spring him. Cody Hoffman last week had a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against UCF. This time, he is taken down just across the 25. So out comes Jake Heaps. Last week against Central Florida in that win, 34 attempts for only 133 yards. They relied on the running game, Rod. Well, Brandon Doman, their offensive coordinator, had made it clear this week. Heaps is playing too tight. He needs him to loosen up and relax. He's going to try and do that for him. Give him things he likes, but take the pressure off of him. Play action to open the game. And he's going to go downfield. And it was well overthrown. A flag comes down at the 40 where they were covering Ross Oppo. That was Jumani Robertson on the coverage. Good to see Oppo back in there. He had a mild concussion a week ago. Yeah, and that's a good call. I mean, Open up, let your quarterback throw something he likes. A deep route, nice and easy. Holding defense, number 13, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, Robertson, Robertson 13 will use his left hand. It'll get down low. See, he's got him there just a little bit, little tag. Now, that's unusual to have that called. Ball was overthrown. That's an unusual call. Couldn't have been pass interference because the ball wasn't catchable. There's Korea. And Korea just levels a defender out for a game of 10. Korea was running very hard last week. A good north south runner who they relied on in the second half of that win a week ago. Well, this is a good omen for BYU. They've had a hard time blocking inside, they got some of it done this time. And Brady McCady comes up, makes that tackle. But that offensive line, the guard center spot, finally coming into shape for BYU's offense. So first down to the 46. Here's Kazeda, the running back. And he gets the carry. And once again, another big hole for the Cougars as we look at that offense surrounding Jake Heaps. Well, if they're backs and receivers, you'll see an awful lot of DJ DeLuiga, who's a very quick guy, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Austin Holt outside, Hoffman, McKay Jacobson. We'll also see Alpo, who was out with a concussion last week. He's back. This offensive line, we've got the, the Reynolds brothers likely to play a lot tonight. Second and two now. Play action. 
Heats plenty of times looking for Oppo. And they're testing these Utah State cornerbacks downfield with Ross Oppo. That was Nevin Lawson with the coverage. Yeah, well, they're going after the corners who both had a little bit of trouble last week against Colorado State. But they're also doing things to make Heats comfortable. That's an easy throw. You know, the deep throw to the sideline, you don't have to worry about threading it in between safeties or linebackers. You just let it fly. And that's one of the ways you go about getting your quarterback relaxed. So he isn't really as strung out as he has been the last couple of weeks. Well, this is where he hasn't been so relaxed. Third downs. Here's a third and two. Quezada. And a good surge for the first down to the fourth. You know, Tess, as we were talking this week about heaps and the situation here, I was struck by Brandon Doman, the offensive coordinator, saying that the scrutiny here on the quarterback is like in the NFL. He said when he was with the 49ers, it wasn't even as bad as it is locally, being the BYU quarterback in this media market. Loaded backfield here, Korea. Another hard run. This just a gain of three that time. As Korea was taken down by Walter McClinton. Here's that Aggies front. Well, they have moved from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Lapu Ajo is inside the nose tackle spot. Garner's also in there, 37 on the outside. The linebackers, Wagner is really the standout. He makes plays all over the field, it seems, and Alexander has really come on as a pass rusher for them lately. Out of the gun on second and seven for Heats. High snap. Over the middle. Complete a first down. DiLuigi out of the backfield. And he's inside the 20. And this BYU offense is off to a good start as DiLuigi was finally taken down by McKay Brady. But a 21-yard gain for BYU. And we expect to see a lot of DiLuigi out of the backfield. Utah State plays a lot of man coverage. So when DeLuigi comes out, he's a good, quick receiver working against a linebacker or a safety. Advantage BYU. <laughs> DeLuigi, nice move at the line. And he's wrestled down at the 11, a gain of five. A defensive backfield for Utah State. They've already been tested. Yeah, and they will be tested. Like I mentioned earlier, they struggled a little bit on the corners last week. Lawson is the better of the two corners. Robertson got a lot of time. He will also be spelled by Sanders who will show up. Brady, the safety, what an athlete. Ran some uh, track here at BYU. Second and five now. This is Quezada. And he's going to be about a yard short of that first down line. So it'll be a third and short for BYU inside the 10 as he was cut down by Walter McClinton. Well, Tess, we've talked about this all season long. And last year, the red zone, you have to score touchdowns. It's not good enough to settle for field goals. They're about, what, 33% or just, just above that, four for 11 with touchdowns. You got to be up around 75%. Third and one now, I formation with Korea, the power back. And he's going to be just about a half a yard short as Kyle Gallagher came up and wrapped up Korea. Well, Gallagher did a great job of reading the play, slipping a would be blocker and getting into the backfield. That's a tackle for loss. Watch him. Middle of your screen, 43. Good swim move, and he gets in there. Here they go for it. They're rushing right up to the line. Quarterback sneak. And it looked like they were able to bulldoze ahead. They didn't waste any time in making that decision. And it is a first and goal for BYU. I think Bronco Mendenhall understands that the red zone deal, kicking field goals, doesn't work. You've got to get touchdowns. You know, that 80% number you'd like to have is not very common in college. In college, the good teams are usually somewhere around 75%. 
So first and goal at the five. Quezada and Correa in the backfield in the gun with Heaps. Timeout. BYU. And BYU is going to take a timeout. Trying to respond to that 80 yard touchdown run by Turbin. Welcome back to Provo. Beautiful sunny afternoon here in Utah. The lights just came on. See the mountains in the background here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Our Utah State jumped out. Opening play, 80 yards for a touchdown. And now BYU just converting a fourth down. Trying to tie this game. And there was some motion. Ball start, offense. 18, five yard penalty, first down. It's a sophomore tight end, Richard Wilson. Not a good deal coming out of a timeout. You know, they do have a matchup issue down here with Oppo, number 11, the wide receiver, working against some of the smaller corners out there. Korea. He is stacked up after a gain of just a yard. It was Bobby Wagner, the star linebacker for Utah State, had 17 tackles a week ago against Colorado State. Yeah, he's a player. He's all over the field. Yeah, Tess, I mentioned that matchup. Oppo goes about 6'3", 6'3 half, facing a couple of 5'9", 5'10", corners out there. Fade so out area. Yeah. Number 11. Split wide, top of your screen. Second and goal. Well, that was a dangerous pass. He looked Oppo's direction, almost as if he was throwing a slant. But it was closer to Maurice Alexander, the outside linebacker, than it was to his receiver, Oppo. Closer? He threw it right to him. Yeah. And he never saw Alexander flashing towards the flat there and threw it right to him. He, he assumed there was going to be man coverage and that the throwing lane would be wide open, but you can't make assumptions down here in the red zone. So now third and goal. Remember, they had first and goal at the five. Got backed up with the flag. Heats to the end zone, incomplete. He was trying for Oppo again. Flag came in. And remember, a week ago, Oppo suffered that concussion down near the goal line under similar circumstances, missed the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah, he takes a shot up high, and I think they're probably going to get Brady here for what they call targeting because he launched at the head. And that's a safety issue, and we've talked about this. Anytime you go above the top of the numbers, that should be flagged. Personal foul, defense, number 36, targeting the defensive player, left his feet and made contact. Number 36 is ejected. Oh, wow. K. Brady is wow. ejected from the game, yeah. saying that there was intent of targeting up high. He's incredulous to that call. This is a former BYU scholarship athlete returning here to Provo. Yeah, he yeah. was a track star here at BYU. Yeah, he left his feet. You see that all the time. I'm surprised they threw him out. Now, they can do that. And I wonder if there isn't something here by the fact that Alpo is returning from a concussion. It's been in the papers. Everybody knows about it. And he missed most of last week with a concussion. As a former BYU player, Maybe they think he targeted because that guy already had a concussion. So a first and goal. And now a flag comes in. Before the ball is snapped, ball start. Offense, number 60, five-yard penalty, first down. Bill Ethan, our referee from CFO West, already having a busy evening. i tell you one thing. I, I don't want to see Oppo come back in the ballgame. I mean, after leaving the game last week with a mild concussion and seeing the way he left the field today, I mean, I just think you ought to be safer and keep him out of the ball game and get him healthy. We bring guys back too fast, in my opinion, who return from concussions. 
So now first and goal from just inside the nine. And he overthrew G. Dave Falsley. Let's go back a week ago and show you what happened against UCF with Oppo. Yeah, he took a hit sort of down here around the same area. An inside route takes a hit and suffered a mild concussion, did not return to the game. Didn't practice the first couple of days, but returned to practice. I think it was Wednesday of this week, Wednesday or Thursday. Second and goal now. Heaps, quarterback run for Heaps. And Heaps gets it to the six. He was met by Chris Harris, who came in the game for the ejected McCabe Brady. You know, they've had issues down here, false starts, but they've also had problems with their snap tests. I mean, they've had issues with the snap all season long in that shotgun, and that one was a wobbling duck. And the timing was thrown off there a bit. Well, that's a great sign to see Ross Oppo coming back into this game. Third and goal. This is where they could use him, too. And there's another high snap. And just over the outstretched arms of J.J. DiLuigi. So the kicking team will trot out on for BYU. Boy, did it seem like they spent a long time in the red zone with well, all the flags. Th they did. <laughs> a couple of false starts. They got a fresh set of downs with the personal foul. Justin Sorensen comes on. After missing from 31 yards to start his season, he has made his last five field goal attempts in a row. This from 23. And Sorensen puts three on the board for BYU. Robert Turbin will be back to action when we return. Boy, is he something for Utah State. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Russell Athletic, who remind you that together we are. And in part by IHOP. Try IHOP's new caramel Appalicious creations, starting at just $4.99. Make it an IHOP day. Tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Oh, look at that, Rod. That does nothing for you. Make it go away. But the, the, the boar. The, Just make it go away. The pig on a spit, as we say in Italy, cignale. <laughs> it's that crust right there and all that succulent juice. All right, all right. Oh, <laughs> kidding me? Jeez. 7-3 game here in Provo. Utah State. On the return, this is Kerwin Williams. Oh, has he ever met? Brought down at the 15-yard line by Ezekiel Ansa. So we've had a fast start to this one. Turbin, only one play, the first play of the game, 80 yards. Brady ejected for that hit you saw on Oppo. And then a long drive by BYU. They could not get a touchdown out of it, although they had a couple of shots at it with a fresh set of downs inside the five. What do you do for an encore? Well, they go the other way. It's Michael Smith. And Smith tackled for a loss of two by Brandon Ogletree and Wagner. Uh, we saw Utah State get outside on the very first play and get 80 yards out of it. Running inside or near the tackle area with that front is difficult. You know, I don't think Robert Turbin was supposed to be out there. Illegal substitution. The 12th player left the huddle. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So after going 80 yards and a touchdown on their first play, their next two, they're going in the other direction. Second and 17 now. Empty backfield for Chucky Keaton. Screen game. 
And it's just a gain of about three that time to Kerwin Williams. Let's look at the backs and receivers for the Aggies. Well, you've seen what Turbin can do. He gets a little bit of help in that backfield from Michael Smith on the outside. Matt Austin's the leading receiver. Stanley Morrison's a quick guy. Eric Motes is also a solid receiver out there for them. Third and 11 now. Turbin is back in the game. He's in a slot to the far side. They have to get out to the 24. Keaton trying to keep the play alive. And he just gets rid of it as the pressure was coming from Kyle Vinoy and the rest of that BYU front seven. That defense can be really, really tough. Big inside, good speed on the edges. Keaton does a smart thing getting away from a little pressure inside where he can create, but he throws his ball away. That's the right thing or else he's going to have a big sack there. Utah State's Tyler Bennett is third in the country in punting average, and he's going to need a good boot here. J.D. Falslev. Nice move to cross midfield so BYU will have good field position after their defense did the job against Utah State. Well you mentioned their defense. How about Kyle Vinoy? He's really done a lot of good stuff for this team. There you see him on the outside. Look what he did against Ole Miss. Not only does he get the sack, he gets the strip. And how about a scoop and score to boot? And last week, nice job late in the game. UCF driving to try to get a tying score, a game winning score. He knocks this ball in the air, deflected for a pick. And then we also see he got a, almost a sack just a couple of minutes ago. And he had a key sack at the end of last week's game to seal that win. Quezada fighting for about a yard and a half that time. Saw Van Noy pressuring Keaton on that third and long. How did you feel about the decision by the officials to take Brady out of the ballgame? Hey, you're the uh, former defensive back who was going after those receivers coming off, coming across the middle for years. How'd you feel about it? I thought the, the penalty was legit. I thought kicking him out of the game was excessive. Chris Harris replaces him. Oh, and they tried to go with a seam to the tight end, Austin Holt, and take advantage of those inexperienced safeties, but they just missed. Well, you can see how Heaps just gets a little bit too amped up, a little bit too pumped up. He threw that ball too hard. You need a little touch to drop that one in over the linebacker and in front of the safety. You see Heaps just one for six to start this game. And now a third and eight. Could have been an offsides there. It is free play for BYU. Incomplete. But we'll hear of the flag here as it looked like an Aggies defender had jumped. Upside defense, number 45, was in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, third down. That was a junior linebacker, Maurice Alexander. He's been coming on strong the past few weeks. Well, it's another third down for Heaps, and he's kind of flirting with danger here. We've seen him be off and late. He's got to make his decisions a little bit faster, better timing. And I, I think they may think in terms of running at a couple of downs here because they've gotten off to a, such a tough start throwing the ball. Third and three after the penalty. And that is caught right at the sticks. The spot should give it to him as Marcus Matthews settled in right at about three and a half yards past the line of scrimmage before he was tackled by Alexander. Well, that was a, a key, a nice third down pickup for BYU. They have struggled with that. Heats in particular has had his issues on third down this season. Only 44% completion percentage on third down. So every one he can get just helps build that confidence. Yep. To pass on first down now. And he gets it complete to his tight end, Holtz. And Holt is inside the 20, down to the 14-yard line. He's a good-looking big target at 6'5", 247. Well, you talked about confidence. 
I think Heath's picked up some confidence after that short pickup for the first down. Look at him here. Nice, strong, tall in the pocket. Follows through. Puts some zip on the ball. Right on the money. Allows his guy to run with the ball after the catch. That's good quarterback play. That's what they want to see on a more consistent basis. Is out on first down. Finds a seam in the left side of the offensive line and runs for four yards before he's met by Connor Williams. Yeah, Richard Wilson, the tight end to the left side, did a great job of giving him an alley to run inside of. When your tight ends can block on the edge, it really works for you. Watch 18. He gets his butt inside so he can turn his body and push Alexander outside. That creates the lane. Second and six, Di Luigi this time. Nowhere to go as he was met by Kyle Gallagher. I love what Coach Anderson had to say about Gallagher. Said he plays like he has a spare body in the closet. Just throws himself <laughs> at every ball carrier. <laughs> Have to use that spare a lot then. Well, they got a big third down here. Remember last time they were down here? They had a couple of third downs and did not convert. Well, they had numerous shots in the red zone with all the penalties. And a timeout is going to be taken by Utah State. It'll be third and six down at the 10 yard line when we return. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore here in Provo. 7-3 Aggies on top. Second trip into the red zone for BYU, Rod. They have had their issues. Talked about first downs being issues. Look tonight, third down, one of two. Red zone 0 for 3. Not accurate here, but it doesn't take much for Heath to correct it. Third and six. They bring pressure. Dibuigi, oh, he tried to fight for the extra yardage, but he's going to be just short as Maurice Alexander wouldn't let go of him. Nice job by Alexander. And covering Dibuigi out of the backfield is tough, and Alexander actually grabbed him and got away with it. That's a smart play when you can sneak in and get it done. Remember, they went for it on fourth down earlier when they were in the red zone. They yeah, were well, not now. Well, Riley Nelson is in the game. Well, they he, are is their, he is their fourth down package quarterback. Yeah, I'm surprised here. I thought they'd kick the field goal to draw within one. Fourth and one, Riley Nelson. Running to the edge. He's got it, fighting for the end zone. And he's going to be marked out at the one-yard line. Chris Harris came up. The backup safety who's playing for McKay Brady who was ejected and Matt Nelson. Well, when you run the quarterback down here, you give yourself an extra blocker and even things out. See the lead blocker that time over there, Korea. And Nelson ran more like a fullback than a quarterback. Nice finish. Heaps back in now, first and goal. Korea. No signal yet, and he's stacked up short. You know, Bronco Mendenhall just got tired of not being able to convert down in the in the red zone here. Havaya Lasiki, the nose guard for Utah State, was able to plug that hole. So Riley Nelson giving them the first and goal. Now a second and goal from inside the one. Quarterback sneak. Still no call. Touchdown. They had to get right into that pile to find out, but it's the result they wanted. Can you find him? <laughs> Can you find him? That's the job the referees had to deal with down there. And that was a delay in the call. Sorensen 
Perfect eight for eight on extra points this year. So Riley Nelson, who's from Logan, Utah, the home of Utah State, comes in and gets that fourth down to keep it alive. About 13 miles northeast of where we are here in Provo is Sundance Resort, beautiful ski resort. Robert Redford acquired this land back in 1969, a year-round resort. You can see what it looks like on a beautiful sunny day today. 10-7, BYU after they converted the fourth down and Jake Heaps muscled it in to take the lead. Sorensen to kick to Williams and Harris. And this will get the flag as it just ducked out before that pylon. Second time that Sorensen has kicked a kickoff out of bounds already this season. That'll start. Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down, Utah State. Good field position for Utah State to begin their third possession. The first possession took one play, 80 yards. Turbin. And look at him just lower those pads and drive out to the 46-yard line. This week, ABC's Saturday Night Football, number eight, Nebraska, number seven, Wisconsin, Cornhuskers' first conference game in the Big Ten. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, part of tailgate week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Second and three now. Keaton sprinting to the far side. And he has the completion. Oh, did he hold on to that? The ball came loose. And they are ruling it a completion that time. No, but now that now that's being yeah. overruled. Yeah, Matt Austin took that hit by Corby Eason, and the ball was juggled. Yeah, they saw what you saw, and he then used the ball to try and brace himself. It was a little bit too late. That ball came out after he was hit. This might be turban time on third down. Is there a running back with bigger arms in college oh, football? He's just got guns. <laughs> Let's start calling him Papa. 5'10", 216. Massively built up top. It's third and three. Here comes the fly. Stanley Morrison, and he is wrapped up. Just a gain of one, and Brandon Ogletree was right on top of little Stanley Morrison. That fly sweep didn't go anywhere. Well, Ogletree does a nice job of seeing this. You see him pointing right there. He flows. No one gets a hand on him, and he just chases us down, which is a, which is a tough job considering how quick Morrison is. So Bennett back out to punt. Fall slip. Back deep. Told you Bennett, number three in the country in punting average. And a big boot that goes into the end zone. So that BYU defense able to corral Utah State again and send Jake Heaps back out there. Well, we talked about that BYU defense and how they've been the real focal point of this team this season. They've done a great job. They gave up a lot of points to Utah a couple of weeks ago, but that was because of seven turnovers and really bad field position. Otherwise, this defense has played really, really well this year. That was a nightmare day for them. The diamond backfield. Bezada. And he doesn't go anywhere. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage that time by Walter McClinton. BYU has had the football most of the game. 26 plays already. And remember, they were down in the red zone. It seemed like forever. Got nothing one time. Settled for a field goal. And they're just going to let the clock run down here at the end of the first. It started with a bang for Utah State, the 80-yard touchdown run by Turbin. But BYU, two good drives to take the lead, 10-7 on a beautiful day here in Provo.
Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Russell Athletic. Part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Sun starting to set here in Provo. Home team up a field goal with the ball to start the second quarter. Another high snap. DiLuigi on the carry this time. And DiLuigi is ridden down after a gain of four that time by Bobby Wagner and Nevin Lawson. Bobby Wagner for Utah State. Told you all the tackles. He's had number seven all time in WAC history with tackles. Came in tonight with 336 career tackles. Well, he's going to get a chance on third down here to make another play. He certainly made that play on second down. He is a player who stays on the field on third down. He's an effective blitzer, but they use him in pass coverage as well. Third and six now. Man coverage, top of the screen. Heaps with time. And he threw it out there before Jacobson made that break, and it goes incomplete as Jacobson was covered by Robertson. Well, they're getting the man coverage that they like. And they want to work against that. And I, I suspect that as we go forward, we'll see them look more to De Luigi out of the backfield when he's matched up against linebackers and safeties because right now their wideouts are not beating the corners in man coverage. So Riley Stevenson on to punt. He's had a good season so far. And a fair catch at about the 37 by Eric Motes. Who muffed two punts a week ago. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Dover. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa. You know what? Tony Stewart has figured out what others haven't, which is he knows how to keep gas in his car. Back-to-back <laughs> -back wins to start the chase. Yeah, he's, he's managing Stewart. his fuel. Other guys, you know, keep running out of gas. That doesn't work out so well. No, it's a problem. Well, here's a guy who can go pretty fast, hit that pedal and accelerate. Robert Turbin. Play action now. Keaton scrambles to the near side and then lofts it downfield and it flies out of bounds. Pressure came from Kavinga on the freshman Chucky Keaton. How about the poise of Keaton? Everybody talks about it. <laughs> right there. You know, didn't get rattled, didn't have a guy open downfield, and as he got flushed out of the pocket, he kept his eyes downfield trying to make a play. Offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin said he's as mature of a kid as I've been around. Now you can see it in this game. Grow up pretty quick when you open your career at Auburn. Second and ten. Pumps one way, comes back with the screen the other way to Michael Smith. And Smith is met just over the 40-yard line, taken down by Corby Eason. Well, Kyle Van Noy got there first, but Smith showed excellent balance in not getting himself taken down by this. Managed to keep his balance there. That's a great job because Kyle Van Noy had him sized up and got him around the anchors. And now you've got a third down. Do you trust the freshman quarterback to throw the ball over the middle? Third and six. Shovel pass and it works out beautifully. Williams with a big gainer down to the 40 yard line. Boy, they played that option, strung it out to the near side, and then shoveled it forward. Well, they did a great job with this. Take a look at how you're going to have this opening here, and then you have Kerwin Williams coming in there. They move everything wide open and get at it. And now they stay on the ground with Williams. And a gain of two that time. But that's okay. You know, we said it was going to be hard to run inside against those big guys up front. You know, three 300-pounders. But you have to do it every now and then to keep them honest. Those three guys inside just refuse to let you run inside. So the outside is where they'll normally run it. Second and eight. That was Smith coming around, and that was Keaton taking a big, big hit. Spencer Hadley and Kavinga came in 
and found the young QB. Uh, and Hadley delivered a blow. All 230 pounds of Hadley gets in on Keaton here. Keaton doesn't see him. Oh. Stuck him good. Third and seven now. Turbin out of the backfield, met right away. He had nowhere to go. Ethan Manamaliuna was quick to get after him, as was Joe Sampson coming up from that boundary corner position to take out his legs. Well, we talked about it a couple plays ago. Do you trust the freshman quarterback to throw the ball over the middle, down the field? They didn't trust him there in that situation to put the ball out there. They're going to have to open that up. There is Dave Baldwin working with him now. He's got a live arm. Bennett to punt. Directional kick this time. And they are able to get it inside the 10 yard line. 10 7. Cougars on offense with Jake Eaves when we return. Jeep is proud sponsor of the ESPN Jeep Ultimate Tailgate Experience. Touring college campuses around the country. Log on to ESPN.com. Search Jeep to learn more. Next stop on the ESPN Jeep Ultimate Tailgate Experience is tomorrow. Notre Dame taking on Purdue, Ross State Stadium. That experience will be in West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue uh, lost to Rice a couple weeks ago. I'll tell you one thing, Floyd's having an <laughs> incredible season for Notre Dame at that wide receiver spot. Notre Dame now has momentum after their early season struggles. See if they can keep it against Purdue tomorrow. Heaps gets the completion to Matthews. And Matthews with a 10 yard reception before he's taken down by McClinton. And clearly having Heaps throw on first down is relaxing for him. I mean, he's he's pretty much thrown the ball effectively on the early downs, struggled on the later downs. Remember, this is a guy that came in with so much hype, true freshman, one of the top recruits in the country, played last year. And now having to get through this sophomore phase. Inside run this time by Kazeda. Gain of about two and a half. You know, sometimes it's not all on the quarterback. There are five overthrown passes. That's on him. But you know, there's sometimes you need receivers to step up and make plays. And we saw one ball thrown earlier that Luigi had a shot out, shot at it in the end zone, didn't get there. But Brandon Doman certainly wants the receivers to step up and make some big plays and help out the quarterback. He's the offensive coordinator up high says our receivers need to make plays for him. Second and seven. We go with the screen to Oppo and a good block from his fellow receiver Cody Hoffman out in front for a gain of eight before he was tackled by Lawson. Yeah I'm glad Oppo's okay. I'm just not real crazy about seeing him in the ball game. Out yeah. last week with a concussion against UCF took a big hit and then earlier tonight in the end zone Took a big hit from McKay Brady, who was ejected from the game. The starting strong safety for Utah State was thrown out of the game as Oppo was slow to get up. But now back to action. Third and one. Devoigi needs that yard, and he gets three. I'll show you what happened to Oppo in the course of seven days. Yeah, takes a hit down around the goal line last Friday night. That put him out of the ball game. It was a mild concussion. Did not return. Missed a lot of practice. Tonight, Brady gets in with this, but he's flagged for launching, and then they kicked him out of the game. I thought it was a legitimate call for launching, but I don't think it was worth kicking him out of the game on. We've seen worse hits than that. So a first down for BYU. Heaps out of the gun. They bring a little bit of pressure. Pick it up. And then out of the backfield, just crossing was Jacobson. As he snuck across that line of scrimmage for a gain of one to help out Heaps. Yeah, how about Lawson on that? I mean, that's man coverage, chasing a guy across the field. The pass is completed, and they get a yard out of it. And you can't play man coverage now on a crossing route any better than that. He's their best corner. And, of course, he'll be tested tonight by these receivers from BYU, but so far... So good for Lawson. They need something here. They got to stay out of third and long. They run on second and eight with Quezada. And Quezada out close to the 39-yard line. It'll make for a third and about three. 
Well, this Bowden is, came up with the tackle there. This is where BYU has had its issues on third down. But this should be manageable. They've got options. They've thrown the ball short on third and three, third and four, and picked it up. They've been able to run it a bit. So they ought to feel a bit more comfortable here with a third and three. Heaps. Time on third and three, and it's incomplete. It was off the hands of McKay Jacobson, and the coverage came from Nevin Lawson, who you were just lauding moments ago. That's the wrong guy to pick on. You're getting man coverage across the board, and that guy is going to play the best man coverage of all their guys out there. And you'll see him show up in the middle of the screen from right to left. And now Utah State calls a timeout because Riley Nelson came out and lined up behind center. Riley Nelson, the backup quarterback, who converted a fourth down earlier, fourth and three, and they sent him back out there. We'll take a break. 10-7 BYU. Rod, let's explain to people what BYU does sometimes with punt formations with their backup quarterback, Riley Nelson. Well, they put him in formation where he could actually run a play. He may actually punt it, though. I can't believe they're actually going to go for it here on fourth and three. This is way too risky. Now the punter comes out from that receiver slot to a traditional punt formation, but Nelson is out there every single time, and the punt safe is on for Utah State, so there's no return man. And it just settles in there at the 23. Well, Coach Anderson pleased with the way his troops handled that. Tomorrow morning, wake up early, college game day built by the Home Depot. Nebraska and Wisconsin. So Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Desmond David Pollock, and Aaron Andrews will be in Madison starting your day at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and then 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN. What an atmosphere that is going to be for Nebraska's first Big Ten game. Keaton. Plenty of time. Gets his big man Lloyd out of the backfield, and Lloyd with a gain of 14. Lloyd goes 6'7", 258. Big target. Nice and easy. Hurry up offense here. Turban in the backfield with Keaton. Opened up the game with that 80-yard touchdown run. Misdirection this time with that fly sweep as Turbin gets out to the 43 yard line. He was tackled by Ogletree. Ogletree's having a solid evening for the Cougars defense. Yeah, the defense is having its way, but for that 80 yard run. And Utah State have, has really not had a chance to get into a rhythm offensively. Got a BYU defensive lineman who's down. So we're going to take a break while they tend to the player down. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. It's a beautiful day to grill here in Provo. That was Graham Rowley who was taken off the field moments ago at the end of that Robert Turbin run. Sophomore defensive end for BYU. Second and six. And Keaton overthrows it as he was trying to get it out to Eric Motes. I think we've only seen Keaton throw one ball that was vertical beyond 10 yards. And I think. Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, realizes that he's going to have to turn him loose sooner or later here. Only 39 yards passing for the freshman quarterback. Third and six. Moves the pocket and gets a complete cross midfield to Morrison. And Morrison's very shifty, and the helmet came off that time. That was Jordan Johnson, the cornerback for BYU, came up and made contact and lost his hat. 19-yard reception for Morrison. 
You know, Tess, we were talking about Keaton and throwing down the field and trusting him, opening up. You see, most of his passes have been in the short area, all of them within short range. First down now, Michael Smith. And a good run by Smith to the 39 yard line before he was tackled by Mata Maliuna. Glad you're with us here in Provo, BYU, who got some momentum going in their season last week with that win against Central Florida after they had a disastrous evening against Utah, trying to avenge last year's upset to Utah State. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you. Second and five now. Empty backfield as Turbin now joins Keaton. And it was batted down right at the line of scrimmage as Van Gupo went chasing after it. Well, Van Gupo does a great job of just tossing aside the blocker and getting his hands up. He is the strongest player on the team. He can toss aside anybody. He goes 6 1, 3 30. Big third down coming up here. You see Van Gupo in there. You know, you got to turn him loose. You got to see if the freshman, I think he's really careful with the football. You can give him a shot here. The big back is now in motion. That's Turbin. And he threw it just behind the receiver. And it is indeed caught by Lloyd. You know, when you watch Keaton, you can tell. He's really careful with the football. You can trust a quarterback like that to take some shots down the field. I mean, he's just not a guy who just throws it around haphazardly. He's very deliberate about his reads and where he's going to go with the football. So I think now in this fifth game for him, give him a little bit more rope. How about that effort by Lloyd? Yeah. Williams now. And Williams scoots ahead down to the 26 yard line. You see, they've got three backs that they can roll in there. Turbin, Smith, and Williams. Williams is probably the quickest of the three. Changes direction probably better than any, any of them. But all three of them can take it the distance. Last year against that Boise State defense, Williams had 147 yards. Second and five. Play action. Keaton just threw it a little beyond to the outside of Tia the pressure came from Jamison Frazier. How about that conversation we had with Jamison Frazier last week? When he said, yeah, well, you know, what are you like building your, your intensity up, intense linebacker to the game? He said, I play Angry Birds. Yeah. I play Angry <laughs> Birds before I go out in the field. I never knew it could get you that worked up. <laughs> I thought it was just a time suck. <laughs> Third and five. Smith now in the backfield with the freshman keep. They only bring three. And yet he has to scramble and he gets it. Good individual effort by Chucky Keaton. How about the footwork? The ability to pick his way through that defense, changing direction, just a step here and a step there. Watch him pick his way through. Light on his feet, changing direction, great balance the entire time so that he can go three, four different ways to pick up the first down. And a timeout called by BYU. So young Chucky Keaton starting to find himself a bit. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. BYU on top for now. Utah State is threatening. They've had great success in the red zone. One of only 14 schools to enter the week having scored on every red zone trip this year. 11 touchdowns and 12 attempts. That is getting it done. That's the way it ought to be. They're the only one of those 14 with that mark. Michael Smith. Another helmet comes loose that time. He knocked his block off. 
That was Travis Uelli, the free safety who came up to meet Smith. How about, the, how about the nifty move by Smith to get himself free? I mean, he's caught in the backfield. Wagner has him. I mean, Sorensen had him back there. But Smith threw a nice move on him. And there's big number six in the backfield with Keaton. Robert Turbin. Going to take a shot here. And he overthrew Matt Austin. Yeah, had plenty of room out there working against Johnson out there. Just threw a little bit too hard. Needed more air to give Austin the chance to work to that back corner. Now, as a corner, you know when they throw that fade, you know they're trying to get to that back corner over there. It's a long drive for Utah State. We have first play of the game. They went for 80 yards. Now. Trying to earn every inch of it, third and six. They, they do like screens. And BYU is going to take a timeout. Timeout, BYU. Remember we told you earlier that Utah State is probably just a few plays away from being 3-0. How about down at Auburn to start the year? Auburn had a rally down 38-35, just over two minutes to go. Yeah, if you go up and get this onside kick, though, you don't have to worry about Michael Dyer going in for six to beat you. They had that game in their control. And then Eric Motes muffed two punts against Colorado State. And it went to overtime. They went for two, Rod. Yeah. And Turbin came up short. Yeah, they blew a 10-point lead in the last 338 of the game and then with that two-point conversion they had two shots at it had a pass interference went back the second time ran it didn't get it in most coaches won't go for it but anderson said out yeah, we're the home team i'm being aggressive i wasn't trying to get to the next overtime so just a couple plays here or there at auburn against colorado state could be three and zero oh. for now third and six big back turbans in the slot four receivers to the right of keaton They bring pressure. Keaton trying to escape it. And a touchdown for Utah State as he finds Eric Motes. You think that young man's a freshman? Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. Keeping the play alive. Oh, we talk about extending the play. We talked about his poise. The pressure comes from the left. He feels it. He sees it, but he doesn't get rattled. He just keeps his composure, keeps his eyes down the field, and finds Motes for the touchdown. That's big time. Josh Thompson makes it a four-point margin. Take another look at the fleet feet of Chucky Keaton. Well, you're talking about a young man who shows you good footwork, but it's the poise. He didn't get rattled. He maintained his composure, had the presence of mind to look for moats down the field and not simply tuck the ball and run. That is a big time play. I think they got a lot to look forward to in the coming years up in Logan with this kid, huh? Well, Rest of the season, too. My goodness. 13-yard touchdown to Motes. Celebrating its seventh year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And to date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. Remember a year ago, Utah State game was the low point for BYU. Up in Logan, they lost 31 to 16. That coach Mendenhall fired the defensive coordinator the next day. Took over the job himself. Jacob Powder with the kick here. Cody Hoffman bobbled it to start. And then Hoffman grinds it out past the 25. Let's check in with Ryan Burke. 
All right, Joe, coming up on the Dell Halftime Report, I'll be joined by Mark May and Lou Holtz. Guys, will play a little game of take your pick, including the big one at the Swamp as Alabama heads to take on Florida. We'll head to Madison, Wisconsin. That's where game day is. They'll get us set for Nebraska's first ever Big Ten game against Wisconsin. And we'll check in on the ALDS, the Rays, a big nine-zip winner over Texas in game one. Coming up on the Dell Halftime Report, Tess, we'll see you in a few. Thanks, Ryan. Look forward to hearing what the guys have to say about Wisconsin and Nebraska. Quezada now. A gain of four. Should be interesting to see Russell Wilson. No, Russell Wilson second nationally in passing efficiency. Yeah, yeah. It's He's made such a difference with the Badgers. Not a surprise. We thought he'd be a good fit at Wisconsin. He's a high character guy and fits in with that program. Hurry up now for Heaps. And over the middle. He looked that time for Richard Wilson. And that is incomplete. Kyle Gallagher was on top of the tight end. That's going to be some environment in Madison tomorrow, game day there. I just want to know if Kirk, Lee, and Desmond are going to jump around. <laughs> you know, CF won't jump around. Chris working away right now. Yep, grinding. Ready for game day. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., up in Madison. It's going to be a spectacular atmosphere for Nebraska's first Big Ten game. Third and six now. Heaps. Big arm, and he connects. Able to get it to Cody Hoffman. First catch for Hoffman tonight. Gets it out near midfield. And a third down conversion. They pick up 18 here. And again, when you see him do this, you go, my goodness, Heaps is all the quarterback they need. Stands tall in the pocket, no worries about pressure, and delivers a strike. Big arm. So three minutes in the half, and a first down just short of midfield. Korea now. And he gets about two and a half yards. He was met by Bobby Wagner and Gallagher. You know, Heaps needs to string together two or three throws like that. You know, that sort of thing and a big catch to help him out, I think would get him over the hump. You know, he started one of six, since then seven of ten. But I'd like to see him string together two or three throws like that last one. And I think the confidence will really start flowing. That's Matt Reynolds down. He is their best offensive lineman. The senior left tackle only gave up a sack a year ago. A true NFL prospect. Yeah, he's four year starter at left tackle. You don't want to lose him. Our Todd McShay and Scouts Inc. have him listed as a likely third round pick. Of course the Reynolds family has uh, been such a big part of this BYU program through the years. Dad Lance there's Lance Reynolds over there. His older brother Dallas in the NFL with the Eagles. And his younger brother Houston a sophomore offensive lineman with BYU. Well there's the family tree father Lance just saw him assistant coach. Lance Jr. played BYU. There's Dallas and Matt and Houston are on the team together now. So Hanson slides over to play left tackle. Braden Hanson. Second and seven. There's a motion up front. And they get the slant complete to Falsev. And he's out to the 35 yard line, but we'll wait for the play. Well, I think they've got Utah State outside. Decline that goal with the play. Falsev did a nice job of beating the man coverage. Offside defense, number 55. That penalty will be declined. The result of the play, first down. Yeah, Falsev was in the slot and just beat the man coverage with a fake to the outside and came back inside. And they'll probably got to get man coverage again. First down for Heaps and company. Three step drop. It's going to air it downfield. And a diving effort by Cody Hoffman, but it falls incomplete as Nevin Lawson was with him every step of the way. Yeah, a really, really well thrown ball by Heaps, though. Remember we talked earlier about how hard he was throwing the ball? Too many bullets. He put this one out there, he gave it some air and gave 
his receiver a chance to make the play. Hoffman couldn't pull it in. Great coverage out there by Lawson, but that is a much better throw by Heaps. Second and ten, DiLuigi the lone back. Single coverage again. DiLuigi. Nobody touched him for a good ten yards all the way down to the 20 yard line. And that left side of the line did a nice job. As they spread them out with single coverage, the block at the point of attack opens things up. You see they got on the linebackers out there, just pushing Gallagher 43 aside. That opened a big hole. And that's with Brayden Hansen now playing left tackle for the injured Matt Reynolds. Korea on first down. And Korea, a power runner for eight yards. Remember last week against UCF, they just started feeding Korea time and time again. Well, he didn't have a lot of yards last week, but he ran with such authority that he gave the offense a boost. And get up to the line right away, second and two. This is the red zone area where they've struggled. To the end zone here. Incomplete. Oppo was the target. Giovanni Robertson was covering him. I think he had his hands on it, but he couldn't hang on to it. And the last couple of throws by Heaps has been much better. Oppo gets away with a push, but that ball was on target. He just didn't come up with it. That's one of those deals where you got to have your receiver help out the quarterback. He's I don't know that, that he would have come down in the end zone, even if he caught it there. Third and two, just over a minute. Is this the Riley Nelson time? Nope. He stays in a the quarterback. They do have that package with Nelson. To pass on third and two and is batted down right at the line of scrimmage that time by Borje Fila Mayotu. Well, he had Quezada alone at the first down marker. And again, they struggle once again in the red zone. This ball gets knocked down, but they had a shot at it once again, and they couldn't come up with it. Justin Sorensen has now made six straight field goals, this from 29. And make it seven in a row. It was a good-looking drive that came up just short, but they close it to a one-point game. College football presented by Cars.com, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Saturday afternoon from Cowboys Stadium, number 14, Texas A&M, taking on Arkansas. Old Southwest Conference opponents are on soon-to-be SEC rivals. That's right. How about the Alabama defense and the beating they put on Tyler Wilson last week? I'm anxious to see if Tyler bounces back, you know, after that tough deal he had last weekend. Well, something about these games down there at Cowboys Stadium. They've been playing there the past couple of years, and Arkansas has been handling them easily. Well, that ought to be a nice one. A couple of good quarterbacks in that ball game. Wilson and Tannehill going at it. You know, Ryan Tannehill is an amazing story if you think about how his career progressed. Where he was, he takes over, and all of a sudden, this is a guy that you look at and you say, hey, listen, not many guys in the country as good of an athlete as he is playing quarterback, and he plays the position very well. And you go, and we played him in wide receiver for That's what right. reason? <laughs> he was sitting around as a wide receiver. The Aggies moved him to quarterback, and he's been a star ever since. Williams and Harris. And this is Williams on the return. And he breaks a tackle, and he gets out close to the 30-yard line. Tackled by Mike Hay. Our opening play this evening, Robert Turbin got to the edge and said goodbye. Got a couple of nice blocks on the edge, including one by his backfield mate Smith. That set him loose to the edge. 80-yard touchdown run. If, if you were late tuning in, you missed it. You didn't have to be late by much. Since then, only 11 yards. As Keaton takes a knee, they will be content to just go to the break with a one-point lead. And they've been playing with their in-state rivals toe-to-toe -to -toe the past couple years. It's been a long time since they've come down here and 
came away with a win 1978. Yeah you mentioned yesterday you thought that the gap had closed between these two programs. And I think that's that's clear. And I think Gary Anderson has made such strides in trying to recruit and really modeling a lot of what they're doing the way BYU does it of you know, going after the kids of establishing an LDS mission program and recruiting the Polynesian players and seeing what you can get out of the state of Utah and then you get guys like that Robert Turbin and that makes for a happy Gary Anderson 14 13 Utah State up a point on the road now let's join Ryan Burr back in the studio for the Dell halftime report Welcome back to Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Welcome you back to your Friday night ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Russell Athletic part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford charcoal. I will text you late tomorrow night because Lady Antebellum will be on Saturday Night Live. You're a big fan. <laughs> Are you kidding You're me? You're a big like fan it? of the Lady Antebellum. Absolutely. They're great. It's been since 1978 that BYU has lost at home to Utah State right now trailing by a point. Oh master of red zone philosophy. What say you? <laughs> I say if I'm BYU, I'm not happy about my red zone performance in the first half. Three trips into the red zone, one touchdown. That works out to be 33% uh, according to my math. Not good enough. Got to be a lot better than that. If you get it up higher, they'd be ahead in this ball game. They settled for two field goals in those three trips. Utah State has got to be happy with Chucky Keaton and the way he has created. He has extended plays to keep drives alive and to also come up with a touchdown pass late in the first half. This young man is showing that he is a dynamic quarterback who will keep plays alive. And even though Utah State didn't have the ball an awful lot, they're ahead in this ball game. Now BYU is going to have the ball to start the second half. Jaron Bentrude, redshirt freshman to kick to the dangerous Cody Hoffman, who had a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to tie the game in the third quarter against Central Florida a week ago. Hoffman from the five. And Hoffman is taken down at about the 27-yard line that time. That was Chris Harris, the backup safety. In the first half, Utah State only had 28 offensive plays. The biggest was the 80-yard touchdown run open the game by Robert Turbin. Keaton, 8 of 15, creating in the first half. The game was dominated in the first half by BYU with 45 plays, and we talked about their red zone issues. Play action to start the second half. And he gets it complete for just about a yard and a half to Austin Holt. That was Alexander who came up again to make the tackle. He's had a good night. You know, BYU moved the ball up and down the field in the first half, controlled the clock, ran 17 more plays than Utah State, and still found themselves behind at halftime. Left tackle Matt Reynolds is back in. Remember, he left with an injury in the second quarter. Second down now, DeLuigi, and this will make for a third and long. Yeah, Gallagher shot through the gap there and made the play in the backfield. He's their throwback linebacker, old school kind of guy. You can tell by the helmet. A lot of marks on that thing. Well, I'm interested in this third down. You'll probably see man-to-man -man coverage. There's Brandon Doman. He's seen a lot of these third down situations when Utah State goes man coverage. DeLuigi to me is the guy who gets the best matchup because they've struggled to get their wide receivers free. Need to get past the 37 and that's incomplete. And it was Ross Oppo being covered by Jumani Robertson. Yeah, Robertson has really bounced back from what was a, a tough ball game last week. Colorado State picked on him a couple of times, had a Pass interference call late that hurt them, but he's played well tonight. You know, that's the kind of defensive stand 
that a coordinator talks about for 15 minutes at halftime. Hey, when we go back out there, let's try to get them off the field. And they did that. Stevenson, big punt to the 20. And Williams is wrapped up right away. And the flag comes in at that spot. Spencer Hadley was down on special teams for BYU. See where Utah State is going to set up shop here. Holding, receiving team number 21. At the distance, first down. Terrence Alston, special teamer for head coach Gary Anderson. So that'll back him up to the, just inside the 11 yard line. This is much more dancing than holding. Crowd here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium comes alive. Looking to rally support for their defense. Turbin. Tackle for a loss that time by Brandon Ogletree. And it went the wrong way. Turbin decided to go backwards instead of going forward. You know what amazes me, Rod, is they open up the game with Turbin with an 80-yard touchdown run on the first play. He only got the ball two more times in the first half. And I'm sure they talked about that at halftime and came out and gave him the ball. But he he went backwards. He backpedaled instead of going forward. So now it's second and 12 for the freshman quarterback. He's going to keep it himself. And good moves as he has shown us all night long. About 11 and a half yards there before he was finally met by Kyle Van Oy. He has very good, subtle change of pace, change of direction moves. Not fast, hard cuts, but just a subtle change of direction, a, a hesitation that makes a guy miss, and he picks his way through. And they're moving the chains. They're marking that a first down. Turbin. He cuts back. And look at what he's capable of doing as he spins for an 11 yard gain. That's a 215 pound back changing direction. With arms the size of our thighs. Oh, he's Popeye. I mean, those are Popeye arms. I mean, watch him here. He gets going north and south, gets those shoulder pads pointed toward the goal line, but he can change direction with subtle moves as well. NFL prospect. Empty on first down. The screen pass goes incomplete. It bounced out of the hands of Chuck Jacobs. This has got to be a backwards pass, it looks like. Yeah, looks like it actually was a forward pass. I thought when first looked at it was a backwards pass, but that's just an incomplete forward pass. You mark it from where the ball is. Second and ten. Smith on the pitch and he shakes free out to the 36 yard line he was tackled by Hebron Fangupo the transfer from USC where Utah State has had its most success on the ground is to the outside option or toss but running inside has been a chore against those three 300 pound defensive linemen third and six Smith straight up the middle and a first down run. So it'll be a first down for well, they, Utah State. They handled the big fellas that time. Napulu at the right guard spot, Larson at center. They handled the big fellas inside. Yeah, Philip Napulu is their most physical player. He did a fine job that time. Keaton now is reading that play, does hand off to Williams, and Williams crosses midfield for another gain of over nine yards. Brandon Ogletree and Austin Jorgensen on the tackle of Williams. You know, they've used every one of those running backs on this drive already to start the third quarter. They're moving the sticks again. 
Turbin, Smith, and Williams. Wasting no time with Williams this time. And he has a gain of about four yards. But when you rotate backs that often, that frequently, you wonder about whether you keep guys from getting a hot hand. Second and five. The pitch now to Williams. Stiff arm, but trying to escape. Flag came in that time as he powered his way for a gain of four. Kyle Vinoy was the one on the receiving end of that stiff arm. And I think Sorensen nine was the one who got a little bit of the face mask. It was actually Sorensen who got the stiff arm and responded with the face mask. He's our leading tackler. Personal foul, face mask. Number nine defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, and an automatic first down. So what a drive this is turning into against Bronco Mendenhall's defense. Yeah, this is clearly a face mask. Good call here. Actually, you probably could have gotten both of them because it looked like Williams got the face mask first on Sorensen. Oh, boy. Van Oy almost came up with a big one, but still a heck of a defensive play oh. to get in between that. And Gary Anderson is losing it on the sideline. Uh, he thinks that Van Oy was offside. I just think he timed it. I think he did, too. I think he read it every step of the way. I agree. And jumped in front of that ball. I think so. I think that's absolutely right. But so, but Anderson on the sideline was just going nuts. He wanted a flag. Lost his headset and everything. So second and ten. Chucky Keaton to pass. And that's to Matt Austin, who tips toes the sideline there, just inside the 20. You want to tiptoe the sideline? Nice job there by Austin. Brings up a third down, and the freshman quarterback has shown remarkable poise in these situations. He has both Smith and Turbin in the backfield with him on third and six. And there's the flag. All start. Offense. Under 66. Five yard penalty. Third down. So that'll back him up to a third and long now. It'll be third and 11. That was the right tackle, Eric Schultz. They have converted their last five third down situations. Tougher task now at third and 11. We'll see what Chucky Keaton comes up with. Set up the screen, the turban. Blockers out in front. Here comes the big man. Touchdown, Aggies. <laughs> That's a 24-yard pickup for the score. A third and 11, and they set up the screen to Big Robert Turbin. Got a nice block down at the goal line, by the way, by receiver Chuck Jacobs. Josh Thompson makes it an eight-point lead. Second touchdown of the night for Robert Turbin. I want you to see the great blocking on this screen pass that led to the score. Take a look at the convoy they get out here. Four linemen get out here. They wall off the defense inside, perfect leverage. And then once Turbin gets turned up and makes a couple of guys miss, he gets a great block at the end of this by Chuck Jacobs right there. That's the final block that puts Turbin into the end zone. A perfectly executed screen pass. 21 to 13. 
Utah State did it to BYU last year up in Logan. And now they have an eight point lead here in Provo. Cody Hoffman. Good blocks out front for Cody Hoffman as he gets out towards the 35. Let's take a look at some great teamwork brought to you by Russell Athletic. Well, we talked about Keaton at halftime and what he does. He takes care of the football, creative makes plays, and Turbin hasn't touched the ball an awful lot. Two touchdowns, 80 yard run, and then a 24 yard reception on that screen pass for his second score. When he does, he makes it count. Korea now. And Korea out past the 40 yard line. Maurice Alexander with another tackle for Utah State. By Fuo was also in on that play. No reason for BYU to panic. They have moved the football tonight. They just have to be more efficient when they get into the red zone. Zada and he's going to be close to that line needed for the first down. Ball comes by Fuo one more time with the tackle. How strange is it for you to see a BYU offense not air it out 50 times? Yeah, I mean you think of the history of BYU and Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Robbie Bosco, Ty Detmer, and now Jake Heaps as a sophomore finding it a tough go a bit, and they're trying to commit. To the running game the past couple weeks. There is the retired number of Steve Young, of course, the 1990 Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer. With your Heismanology back then, would you have forecasted him for a win? <laughs> well, he had that big <laughs> win against Miami early in the year where he, they were number one, and he threw for 400 yards, so he was out in front early. And a diving effort that time goes incomplete. He was looking for JD Falsled. Anytime you get that signature win early in the year, you vault up in the Heisman polls, and Ty Detmer did that back in that year much like have you seen the respect for Robert Griffin the third all of a sudden this week as the statistical phenom and he has that signature win against TCU to start the year yeah he's been phenomenal just outrageous of course uh, we'll be in action tomorrow as Baylor takes on Kansas State that game at 330 on ESPN or ABC heaps now on second and ten and he is able to get a complete to Matthews at midfield, but it'll make for a third and five. That ball was tipped by Fili Muyatu. Yeah, he's had a couple of passes tipped tonight. And they've really struggled on third down, particularly trying to get the ball to the wide receivers. It's been an issue. Tonight on third down, he eats three completions and eight attempts. Picked up the first down only a couple times. I like De Luigi out of the backfield. I think that's the matchup, not the wide receivers. They're not beating the corners tonight. Well, he's got Di Luigi flanking him here on third and five. And that is off the hands of Matthews. Di Luigi stayed in for pass protection, so he looked to Marcus Matthews. Great disguise by the Utah State defense. They showed man coverage across the board, and then when Heaps got the snap, they fell back into his own coverage. And Heaps was still thinking man coverage. Now they change out of that Riley Nelson formation that we've seen numerous times as Riley Stevenson, exceptional punter for BYU, on to boot it away. And this hits in the end zone. So the BYU offense unable to get things done there. They trail by eight. A look at the student center here in Provo. Nice setting. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. Go to drpepper.com for your chance to get a piece of the million dollar tuition giveaway. Always one of a kind. Tailgate week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. We are here in Provo. 21 to 13. I bet you they're already tailgating up in Madison for that Wisconsin Nebraska matchup. Yeah, I just don't think they're putting any vegetables on the grill. <laughs> I think it's an all meat deal. Maybe some cheese. With the brats and kielbasa <laughs> ready for game day tomorrow morning. Chris and the crew will be with you with the Badgers. Kerwin Williams 
Just a gain of about two. So here it is, Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, number 8 Nebraska, number 7 Wisconsin. Well, you know what uh, Wisconsin's going to do to Taylor Martinez. And they want to know if Taylor Martinez can make the intermediate throw. Second and seven now for the Aggies, up eight. He's going to take a shot as Keaton. And he overthrows Chuck Jacobs. Let's talk a little more about that. Nebraska, their first Big Ten game. Yeah, then Bo Pelini downplay and saying, ah, oh, it's another game. Yeah. But uh, Brett Bielema all in on this one. I He's think it's like, a potential Big Ten title game preview. I, I agree. I agree. But uh, that Nebraska option will test Wisconsin on the edge. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on ABC. Third and seven. BYU defense could use a stop here. Keaton with time. Hits his big tight end who's going to be about two yards short. That's the 6'7", Taryn Roy, the tallest player on the team. Pretty easy for Chucky e. Keaton to find him. Little circle route. Look for the tallest guy over the middle. But that's an ogle tree made the tackle. He's nine inches shorter. <laughs> Chopping down a big tree. <laughs> so Utah State's Tyler Bennett, who came in third in the country in punting average, 48.5 yards per punt, descended away to Falslev. And Falslev is out to the 34, tackled by Chris Harris. Well, BYU's got the ball, trailing by eight. Has not been a stellar night for BYU's Jake Eavesrock. Well, he's had his problems, but he hasn't gotten a lot of help either from receivers. Apple dropped that one. Sometimes they don't cut the guys at the line of scrimmage, and they knock balls down. But he has had his problems being off target. But you have to help your quarterback and make catches, make plays when you have the chance, Mount. Keeps 11 and 25 on the night. And now they make the quarterback change. Riley Nelson is now playing quarterback for BYU. Korea off the left tackle, a gain of four. So Riley Nelson, who was the starting quarterback for Utah State when he was a freshman in college. His grandfather, in fact, was the athletic director there. He went on his LDS mission after his freshman year at Utah State, came back from that, and transferred to BYU. Is that, like, not allowed? <laughs> I mean, that's going to your rival? And now he finds himself, as the quarterback, down eight against his old team. Second and five. Design quarterback run, and that's exactly what he can do. And he picks up the first down, and you hear the roar from the crowd. As Jake Heaps looks on. Well, clearly he is a more mobile quarterback than Heaps, but the test is going to be on those third downs when they have to throw the ball in the intermediate to deep area. That's where the quarterback play from the pocket has to be at a higher level than they've had. So first down for Riley Nelson and BYU. Play action. Takes a shot and gets it complete. What a catch by Cody Hoffman. Well, we talked about the need for receivers to make plays and help the quarterback. Well, Hoffman does that here. And that ball is a little bit out beyond him, but he lays out to get it and keep it from hitting the ground. That is fantastic. Those are the big plays that you need. And he caught the back half of the ball stretched out there. First down now at the 31. Korea. Just about two yards that time as Korea was taken down by Bobby Wagner. Remember, Riley Nelson was the starter of the beginning of last year when Heaps came in as a true freshman. 
and got injured, had surgery, gave way to Heaps. And this is the area of the field in which Heaps and company really struggled. Nelson has a chance to do better. Nelson to pass on second and eight sets up the screen, but he threw it to the outside arm of Divoigi. Yeah, well, had he Made been on target, out. would have been a problem because Maurice Alexander was all over that for Utah State. So he, now he'll face a third and eight rod. Yeah, and this is the situation we talked about. I mean, this is quarterback play from the pocket. Sometimes you just have to be able to deliver the football from the pocket. Need to get to the 21-yard line. That was a floating snap there. And he tried to get Oppo on that post. And the coverage came from Robertson. Yeah, a little bit late, a little bit behind him, and excellent coverage. I'm impressed with how well the corners Robertson and Lawson have handled the BYU receivers tonight. So Justin Sorensen back out this attempt from 47. He has a long of 46. He has hit seven in a row. Never had a chance. By eight. Let's check in with Ryan Burke. All right, Test Sports Center in game, game one, Tigers Yankees. It has been postponed after a one hour, 15 minute rain delay. Game one will be picked up 8 30 Saturday night, 1 1, bottom of the second inning. They'll pick the game up 1 1, bottom second on Saturday night. Game two will be played Sunday night, 7 p.m. That was their scheduled off day. Once again, tonight's game has been postponed. Enjoy the football, Test. We will, Ryan. Hope everybody is that was planning on watching baseball. That was a special night of Major League Baseball on Wednesday night, wasn't it, Rob? Loved it. Here's Keaton on first down. And he just sends it out. How about the fact that when the Red Sox lost, the Rays came back within three minutes of that with the walk-off. <laughs> you're sitting there channel surfing and you're <laughs> like, you kidding me? <laughs> Speaking of baseball, this is like a foul ball. Look at where Keaton sends this one. Yeah, well, he played a little baseball in high school. He knows how to toss the ball. Toss that one way out of the way. Second and ten now. Turbin cuts back, and now he gets going. And when Turbin gets going, watch out, because defensive players are going to go flying. That's a first down for the Aggies. He just doesn't get enough touches. I agree. As they rush to the line here, a hurry up. Gets the rock this time, and once again, Turbin powers his way through. A gain of nine yards for Robert Turbin. And he's a guy who needs 20 to 25 carries a night. He's strong enough. Four touchdowns last week against Colorado State. Has two tonight, had an 80 yarder to open up the game. Great balance, good vision, very patient runner. Michael Smith now in the backfield on second and one. And Smith picks up the first down. And that offensive line of Utah State keeps after it, crossing the 45. You know, we were talking about Turbin and his attributes. And he is a guy that is drawing some interest from NFL scouts because he's a big back, good speed, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Really good vision. He's impressive. But just not enough touches, only seven tonight. Williams with a two yard gain. That's part of the reason why he doesn't get an, an awful lot of touches. Smith and Williams are pretty good in their own right. Yeah, Smith has two runs over 50 yards on the year. And we told you, Williams, last year against that Boise State defense that was loaded, he had 147 yards at the end of the year. He's missing a wheel right now, though. So second and six. 
BYU defense. He's got to come up with a stop here against this running game of Utah State. Smith in the backfield. And they stay with it. Oh, they met him that time, didn't they? That was Ethan Mato Maliuna. And Wona Kavinga. Uh, Kavinga got in there with a nice shot on Smith. They'll they'll bounce him back. That's big time. Big third down. BYU needs a stop to get off the field. Crowd knows it as they start to roar. Third and six. Keaton on the slant and he connects with Xavier Martin. A first down for Utah State. They move the chains again. And Keaton is limping a little bit, grimacing. But he was patient, waited for the slant to come open, picked up the first down. He took a hit at the end of that throw. Utah State is on the move again. A little underrated in state rivalry. Getting chippy here between the Aggies and the Cougars. Eight point lead for Utah State as we head to the fourth. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore here in Provo as we're ready to start the fourth. And so far, Utah State controlling things. Keaton throwing the ball very well, different receivers. Turbin having a big night. BYU struggling through the air. I think Robert Turbin is the best player on the field tonight. And a sellout of over 63,000 have seen him go for an 80 yard touchdown run and then a 24 yard screen pass for a touchdown. And this is Williams, and Williams gets to the outside, and Williams breaks free inside the 10. It'll be first in goal for Utah State. It has been any number of running backs tonight with this running attack. The Noy just gets moved out of the way completely with a great block. Ball start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty. First down. And that's Schultz with the false start. It's going to push them back over 200 yards rushing tonight for Utah State. They came in as the fifth best rushing attack in the nation, averaging 316 yards a game. Smith now, as he gets it to the six yard line, where it'll be second and goal. And they opened up the season with more than 200 yards rushing against Auburn and actually should have won that game. They had Auburn beat until a late onside kick was recovered by Auburn. Remember Auburn needed that late rally and then a week ago they went for two in overtime and lost to Colorado State. This is a, a team that feels just a couple plays away from 3-0. What a win this would be for them. Keaton keeps it himself and he has met Right away, he had nowhere to go because Hedron Fangupo was never sold on it. A BYU desperately trying to hold on and hold him to a field goal attempt here. A touchdown would almost be insurmountable for BYU the way their offense has struggled. Utah State, seven for eight on their last third down. Third and goal. Keaton met at the five yard line by Wagner and Fangupo. But margin is eight. They can push it to two possession game. As they trot on with Josh Thompson, the sophomore place kicker. Has been off to a good start this year. Three for three on the year. This just a 21 yarder. Yes. And he makes it an 11 point game. Could it be back to back years for the Aggies over BYU? Stay with us.
this rivalry. For the recent years, BYU has dominated. Play action for Burrell. Airs it out downfield. Touchdown, Aggies! Cuts in with ease. Utah State just dominated straight through. And the Aggies have the win they've been waiting 17 years for. And now they may soon have the win that they've been waiting since 1978 for because that's the last time they won here at BYU. BYU needs a fourth quarter rally down 11. And they get a break here as the flag will come in. After that kick by Josh Thompson, who's not known for having a lot of range and a big leg, he was kicking off. You know, Gary Anderson's done a nice job at Utah State, and he coached with Urban Meyer at Utah back when they made their BCS Bowl appearance and Urban told me that he knew early on that that man was going to be a really good head coach because he had the unique ability to push his players without losing their love and respect for him. That's a unique quality in a coach. You know, when he took the job, he said, I took it because of the commitment of the university. He says they're committed to having a good football team here, and they are on their way. And now D. Luigi. He gets it just across the 45. Anderson is one of 11 former coaching colleagues of Urban Meyer who've gone on to become head coaches. That's that's a pretty good legacy. New age coaching tree. Riley Nelson. And he's able to complete it. Took him a while, found a target. It was Brian Correa, and it's a first down to the Utah State 45. Well, he has an ability to create with his feet that Heats doesn't quite have. And they hurry to the line. Jake Heaps on the bench. Riley Nelson trying to spark a comeback. De Luigi, good scene by De Luigi. And he's down to the 31-yard line as he was tackled by McClinton. This is a must-score drive for BYU. And we've seen it all night. This is the area where they start to struggle. Now they can't back off. They have to be aggressive down here. 14-yard run by De Luigi. Nelson is going to do it himself. And they push the pile forward close to another first down. They're playing with that aggressiveness now, Rob. Yes, they are. And that quarterback run, the quarterback design run, is something they did not have in the package of plays with Heaps. They pulled Heaps in the third. They brought in Riley Nelson, the one-time starting quarterback at Utah State, who transferred to BYU. Second and one. Oh, he threw it low. Soft on that. And that's the matchup you've been talking about all night, Rob. They've had it all night. De Luigi coming out of the backfield, man to man, matched up with that time Wagner, a linebacker. That is a big mismatch. They can't, they can't get enough of that one. They got to find it again. So instead, it's third and one. They bring a blitz. Nelson makes it happen. He lost his helmet, but he was able to get by the oncoming pressure and get the first down. How many helmets have we seen fly around tonight? They bring the pressure inside. You see Gallagher, 43, coming with Wagner. And Nelson does a good job of just finding his way to the left side. And now they're inside the red zone. Nowhere to go that time. That was a good initial surge by Havaya Lasiki. Yeah, well, you know, Utah State is saying, we understand that you've got the quarterback run as being part of this. You're not going to score on us by running the quarterback or running inside. You're going to have to throw the football. They bring the run blitz, covering each and every gap inside, overwhelming them. Bowden also getting in there. So now it's a second and 14. It's like they may be backing off the man coverage. Need to get to the 10-yard line. Pumps once, takes a shot. Touchdown, Cody Hoffman, spectacular catch.
He beats Robertson here. He got him in single coverage, made a great catch, and got the right foot inbounds. You can see it clearly from that angle. And that's what we were talking about earlier. Having a wide receiver make a play to help out the quarterbacks. They weren't making catches like that when Heaps was in. Riley Nelson galvanizes this team, this crowd, and they're right back in it. And Heaps is loving it too. Four point game. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Russell Athletic, who remind you that together we are, and in part by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. It is tailgate week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal, and finally the BYU offense was cooking. They went eight plays, 60 yards, in just over two and a half minutes, and the decision to replace Jake Heaps with Riley Nelson pays off. Williams is going to take this out. Only to the 15. Here's Ryan Burr. Sports Center right now. Tampa Rays beat the Rangers 9 zip. Matt Moore becomes the youngest starting pitcher to win his team's first game of the postseason, surpassing Gary Nolan of the 1970 Reds. Seven innings, two hit ball. Rays lead the series 1 zip. Major League Baseball announced tonight that the Yankees Tigers game has been suspended due to rain. They'll pick up that game. Game one, 837 on Saturday. Avon Nova against Doug Fister. Guys. Thanks, Ryan. Well, pressure time for the freshman quarterback now. Chucky Keaton in Utah State. Smith. Good run by Michael Smith. Crossing midfield and finally pushed out inside the 35 by Corby Eason. I here we go. There you see this. That's where they're working. They're working right there on Vinoy. Vinoy comes down, stays out for the quarterback. They give it inside. A good read by the freshman quarterback, Keaton. Williams now just a gain of two. That is the third run this year by Michael Smith over 50 yards. He goes for 53 there. Well, they have not used that play an awful lot tonight. But when they have, it's been effective. 281 rush yards on the map. Wow. They do it to everyone. Fifth best rushing team in the country. Second and eight now. Williams again. At two yards that time as he's met by Daniel Sorensen. Listen to this. I'm not sure who got the better of that one. So now a big third and six. Crowd is roaring for a defensive stop here. Keaton swings it out of the backfield. Smith and he's taken down. What a play by Kavinga. Are you kidding me? The transfer from USC came up big right there. 5'11", 236 pounds out in the flat in open space with a guy who can really go Smith he sizes him up and throws it the right time for that upfield leg and gets a gets both of them that's a great great play we talked about the range of Josh Thompson earlier this could be stretching it a 47 yarder as long as 41 and it's a fake and he's going to pass and it's incomplete as Daniel Sorensen stayed with coverage of Taryn Roy. Well, Lloyd 88 is never open, but he's 6'7", so they believe he's always open, and Sorensen was there to defend the play. You know, Sorensen's a big safety. He goes 6'2", 206. And he was right there with Taryn Lloyd. So the gutsy call does not pay off. And now BYU is fired up. Oh, 
Nelson choosing his options. He goes with Korea, who goes up and over right near the sticks. Robertson and Alexander came in to undercut Korea, and he went airborne. Well, Korea has done this the last couple of weeks, and Nelson has given this offense a shot in the arm. Hurry up to the line again. First down at the 40. Devoluigi now. Devoluigi trying to get to the outside, and he cannot do it as Maurice Alexander was on top of him. Remember what has happened to Utah State this year. They had the lead against the defending national champs. They blew that. Colorado State, they had the lead. They lost in overtime. Tonight, they were up 11 earlier in the fourth. Nelson on second and nine. First down, Cougars. Marcus Matthews. Are they not going to give him that forward progress, Rod? Oh, that's that's not a good call. Looked thought, like he was beyond the stick, yeah. and then he was pushed back. I thought he caught that ball at the 50-yard line. Nelson picks it up anyways. <laughs> How about the official trying to get out of the way? <laughs> the umpire was running out the side door. Look at this crowd. A sellout of over 63,000. Well, moments ago, they were chanting Riley Nelson. Jake Heaps, the starting quarterback pull. Riley Nelson, the former starter at Utah State, who transferred here to Provo in. Design quarterback run. Here goes Nelson again, and a nine-yard gain. No quarterback gets more love than the backup quarterback. Especially when he comes in and performs. Gives them a different dimension. Can do it on the ground. Second and one now. Did he bottle that? No. First down catch. Cody Hoffman. Cody Hoffman's come up big, hasn't he? he? And now the other official is coming in and saying, yes, indeed, he did bottle it. He never had possession. They'll likely take a look at this. Well, Mendenhall is adamant that the ball was caught. It looks like he had the one hand, and then he cradled it against his face mask. He didn't have two hands on it, but he had one hand on it, and it looks like he's got control over it before he goes out of bounds. That's one hand, face mask, inbounds. I think that's a catch. Well, the question becomes, did he have possession before he went out of bounds? Exactly, and it looked to me like he had one hand wrapped around that ball, cradled against his face mask as he hit the ground. So they're going to review this and it'll determine whether or not it's a first down for BYU to keep this drive alive as they try for the comeback here at home. We'll take a break and come back with this review. Moments ago, we saw a diving effort from Cody Hoffman that initially was ruled a catch, and then another official came in and said incomplete. So they've been reviewing this while we've been away in break. This would be a first down for BYU if the call is reversed. Right, so the call on the field was incomplete. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed to a catch. It will be BYU's ball at the 34-yard line. First down. So the call reversed, meaning that there was indisputable video evidence proving that the call on the field was wrong. And this is what we saw. The one-handed catch with the ball cradled against the face mask means he had control. He had possession. The ball was not moving. Now, what surprised me is that the line judge, who was right on top of it, said, yes, a catch. And then the guy from 20 yards away came in to say incomplete. Yes. But I think they got it right. First down, BYU.
Diwawiji now on first down. And he tries to power behind that offensive line to the 30. Five minutes and a little bit of change as BYU tries to rally here. Remember, they have not lost to Utah State here at home since 1978. Well, the matchup that has worked or been available to them has been DeLuigi out of the backfield when they put him in the slot or when they simply take him out of the backfield against man coverage as Alexander is down now for Utah State. Maurice Alexander is being tended to. He's had a good night. The outside linebacker for that Aggies defense. Let's take a look at some of the unlimited action coming up this weekend brought to you by Sprint. Robert Griffin, the third, road test Kansas State. Ought to be a good one. He is hot. And then you look at that Clemson game, you know, they beat Auburn already, Florida State. If they beat Virginia Tech, I think they probably vault into the top ten. It's a huge game. Sammy Watkins, the freshman oh. receiver for them. <laughs> has been sensational. He's hasn't ridiculous. He? He's fantastic. And don't forget Taj Boyd. And he's played great at quarterback for Clemson. So I think if, if they win this game, I think they're moving up into the top ten. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Virginia Tech, of course, very talented themselves. With David Wilson at running back and Logan Thomas. And that's going to be a good one tomorrow on ESPN 2 at 6. Second and 6 now for BYU. Korea. Lowers the pads and spins. It'll make for a third and about two as Chris Harris had the tackle there. Remember, the strong, starting strong safety, McCade Brady, was ejected in the first half of this game. So Chris Harris has had a fill in. There he is, number 10. The ejection occurred because of a hit high above the shoulders. Launching, there is Brady. He was ejected early in the first quarter. Third and two. Davoichi is stacked up. Ball is loose. The ball is loose. And that was Chris Harris who jumped on it. So Utah State takes over. The question is, Tess, was he down? Was he down? No. I don't think he was. Look for the knee. Is the knee down before the ball comes out? Ball is now out and he is still falling. If that is review, it will stand as a fumble. It was Harris who knocked the ball out and recovered it. And Turbin with a gain of one. Boy, we were just talking about the role that Chris Harris has played tonight. How McCade Brady was ejected, their strong safety, who was a track star here at BYU, then transferred to Utah State. And Chris Harris, a seldom-used senior, comes in, plays big, and at that critical juncture, gets the fumble recovery. And if you're Utah State, it is your four-minute offense. You need to run clock and pick up a couple of first downs. DiLuigi just hit himself with his helmet. He's so frustrated. I saw that. Robert Turbin with a gain of two. You know, the fullback Owen Schmidt at West Virginia used to do this to psych himself up, but this is a whole other way about it. Look at this. Look at the frustration from DiLuigi. You know, the first hit was enough, but then the second one looked like it was pretty hard, too. Timeout, BYU. Three minutes to go. Utah State looking to pull it off again. Just the start of a good weekend here. Two primetime games Saturday night on ESPN. Two in ESPN. First on ESPN 2 at 6 Eastern. Clemson, Virginia Tech, number 13, number 11. Then on ESPN at 8 Eastern. Notre Dame versus Purdue. That game also available on ESPN 3D. Big third down here. Chucky Keaton has been in tough situations. Bronco Mendenhall's defense needs to stop desperately here. Third and seven. Freshman quarterback Chucky Keaton. 
Was on the road at Auburn week one and almost pulled it off. Now here at Provo looking for a big score. Turbin joins him in the backfield now. Keaton, nothing doing. Tackled for a loss. BYU's defense steps up. It was Jamison Frazier, the senior, who met Keaton. They brought the pressure. They don't normally blitz very often. But BYU brought the pressure. From the top of the screen, you see pressure coming. And they got there with it. And the timeout called by BYU. And what a sigh of relief for J.J. Divoigi. You see him there moments ago. You saw him smashing his forehead with his helmet. He fumbled and turned the ball over to Utah State. Utah State was in position to close things out. This was just moments ago when BYU was driving. Yeah, Chris Harris comes in. The replacement safety knocks the ball out and also recovers it. That's one heck of a play. Although D DJ DiLuigi wasn't too thrilled about it. So now 2.49 to go. And Tyler Bennett on to punt to J.D. Falslev. Bennett, third best punter in the country for average. And I think he proved that big boot there. Look at this inside the 10, still rolling inside the 5 to the 4. You hate that you don't catch those things. Save your team 30 yards. If you can get over and catch that 67 yard punt he waves this off right away and then realizes oh you gotta catch that and he was at the 32 yep instead they have it at the four that's just a mental mistake on special teams that cost BYU field position now Over two and a half minutes, and Riley Nelson, the backup quarterback who has sparked this offense, trying to make this comeback happen. Quarterback run. And he did, he did get forward progress out past the one and a half yard line, but Levi Koskin made a very good defensive play. The Utah State mixing up what they're doing defensively, going back to zone. And running a stunt inside, able to get pressure there with Koskin. Nelson gets it complete. That is Marcus Matthews. As they fight for the ball, but he was down just a few yards past the original line of scrimmage. Now, on this third down test, Nelson's going to get a chance to throw the football into some windows. I don't expect Utah State to play man coverage or the blitz here. They've got him backed up. They want to make him earn it. Third and six. Need to get out to the 14 yard line. Pressure from behind. It's going to be close. Looks like he got the good spot, and it should be a first down for BYU as Gallagher and Wagner came in, but a first down for Coach Mendenhall's team. And now they'll have to speed it up. Clock is running, only one timeout. Long way to go. They need a touchdown. Nelson, complete out there to Jacobson. Taking advantage of Utah State playing soft zone coverage right now. Utah State thinking about if you play man coverage, you don't have any help. If somebody slips down, you give up a big one. Minute 15. Clock stopped. Second and three. Quarterback run again. Remember, only one timeout. And here goes Riley Nelson. He was tripped up. He was in full sprint, and he was tripped up. But it is a first down as the clock will stop momentarily. Nice out job. to the 34. They, nice job of spreading them out. Utah State defense still walking around. And now a timeout is called by Utah State. The real deal is brought to you by Wendy's. And that rushing offense of the Aggies 
all night long. Yeah, and it really hasn't mattered whether it's Turbin, who started off with an 80-yard run, or if it was Keaton breaking out of the pocket. Sometimes it was Williams also getting something done, and Smith got involved as well. But Turbin's been the real guy on the night as they picked up 284 yards on the ground. Real Deal brought to you by Wendy's to vote for the Real Deal at ESPN.com. You can do it right on your mobile phone. 123 yards on nine rushes for Turbin because he busted out an 80 yard touchdown run on the first play of the game. Now he's hoping that his defense can hold on to this thing. Utah State burned the timeout. They had trouble getting their defense set. They were trying to substitute, they weren't set. 1978, the last time that Utah State won here at Provo. Heaps unable to connect with Korea. His running back coming out of the backfield. A reminder that Sports Center will follow this game. We'll talk about the baseball playoffs, the cancellation. Get you ready for the weekend of college football, including game day up at Wisconsin for number seven against number eight, Wisconsin and Nebraska. Nelson on second and ten. Here comes pressure. Gets away from it. Launches it downfield. And it is caught. That was McKay Jacobson. They got a shot here. This is all Riley Nelson buying time. And Jacobson coming back to help him out, coming back to the ball. Nelson, he's going to run it again. They only have one timeout left. First down. So the clock stops with 28 seconds to play, and they have the ball down to the 13. Clock will run when they spot the ball, though. Clock is running. They move the chains. The clock runs again. Got to hurry up. He needs to snap this ball. I, I don't understand that. You know, they had a chance to just go ahead and down the ball and stop the clock and save 10 seconds there. You know, if you don't want to burn your time out, that's okay. You just line up and spike the ball and save 10 more seconds. Now you got to do a better job of clock management right there. Those looks say it all. Watch the clock. We're going to show you this at the conclusion of the last play. So Nelson goes forward and they stop it at 28 because of the first down just for a moment. But line then up he and has spike to it. realize Rod line up and spike it right. That's what you need to do right there. They're not aware of it. They're confused. And now they lose 10, 11 seconds that they can't get back, and they have to burn a timeout. And they lost about 15 to 20 seconds on that. They have enough time for two shots at the end zone, maybe a third. BYU still has the timeout. Utah State just burned one. They bring pressure. Nelson over the middle. Oh, he was caught on the deflection. Marcus Matthews. Right place, right time, right away. Can you believe that? Number 
you can add that to the reel of outrageous Friday night finishes, it happens again, this time capping a 96-yard drive. Well, Will Davis on the coverage, 17, middle of your screen. Watch him do a nice job knocking the ball away, but look who's there. Marcus Matthews, right place for the deflection. And that's a good defensive play by Davis, but it just so happened that Matthews was running along the middle to the back of the end zone and got the deflection. Holding call came on Davis as he batted away. And Marcus Matthews. Now Davis was in there to play single coverage on DeLuigi. Story of the night is Riley Nelson and Jake Heaps celebrating for the man who replaced him here in the second half. And Gary Anderson, the Utah State head coach, just fold those arms. Wow. What are you to do? He's had a rough deal with late collapses, tough losses for Utah State to start this season. And they squib it, and the ball comes loose and goes out, leaving eight seconds. What heartbreak it's been all year long for Utah State as only eight seconds remain. Remember, opening week against the defending national champions, they had the lead. They blew it. Last week, Colorado State in overtime, a failed two-point conversion. And here against their in-state rivals, up 11 in the fourth quarter. And now this. Not only up, but in the, the last drive, they had them backed up to their own four-yard line. And then got a sack on the first play. Keaton just airs it out. And it falls incomplete. They thought they had it. They waited 33 years. BYU hasn't lost to Utah State at home since 1978. And it took a miracle finish to pull it off tonight. Absolutely outrageous. The deflected ball into the end zone and into the hands of Marcus Matthews with only 11 seconds to play. That man, Riley Nelson, changed the game. And what a story, Riley Nelson, who was the starting quarterback at Utah State his freshman year. His grandfather was the athletic director at Utah State. He went on an LDS mission after his freshman year. He came back and he transferred to BYU, was sitting on the bench, got the call in the second half, and rallied the troops. On that game-winning drive, Nelson was four of five for 66 yards passing and a touchdown and ran it four times for 30 yards. He accounted for every one of the 96 yards BYU got on that drive. It's not often you see a crowd storm the field for an opponent that you've dominated. But the way this one ended, and knowing what happened a year ago, enjoy it, Cougar fans. Let's take another look at how they did it. Will Davis, Nelson's trying to get it to DeLuigi. He knocks it away, he's thinking, good play. And there's Marcus Matthews. As Nelson jumps into the arms of their star left tackle, Matt Reynolds. And Gary Anderson, that is a head scratcher, isn't it? A sellout at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. They're going to be celebrating in Provo. Miracle finish. Spectacular play by Riley Nelson on that last drive of 96 yards and the touchdown to Matthews. 27-24, BYU takes it. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, you can log on to ESPN.com. For Rod Gilmore and our entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your night, including SportsCenter, right now.